this is a legacy planetary system in Excel. I made this about a year ago. Um, it's a rather old-fashioned way of solving the problem. I used a table, a large, large table having about 5,000 rows, each row containing a time step, you know, informa information for a time step. So this was a large uh, formula table. And the uh, macro is essentially, uh, the run macro is essentially a uh, counter. So you take this index, the resulting index, and uh, using an offset function, you display various points in time on the, on the 2D scatter chart and gives this uh, feel of movement. Let's start the model. Now, uh, what is nice about this uh, model is a, is a fully three-dimensional model. Not only the display, but the planets can be chosen to move on three-dimensional trajectories, like you see here. And uh, this table here contains the initial conditions which means XYZ coordinates, XYZ speeds and uh, masses. And uh, you can also change time step, simulation time step, the decimation, the simulation decimation, which means if you choose it one, it goes through all 5,000 steps one by one. If you choose it, uh, say, five, it goes only through a thousand steps because it skips every four, uh, every four steps, e every five, it displays every fifth step, so it skips four steps at a time. Um, but of course, now it's five times faster, so especially if you run this in a, in a newer version of Excel, which are painfully slow, 2007, 2010, these are very, very slow versions. If you use these, then um, you might want to step up the decimation. Let's go back to one. And uh, another nice feature is the origin. You can change the origin of the planet. So on planet 1 or 2 or say 3. So what happens here is it, it's just like um, if you were to position yourself on one of the planets, you can select here and see the rest of pla the planets moving relatively to you. So uh, let's go back to planet 1. And uh, another uh, another interesting feature in Excel is you see there are two planets which are three-dimensional. The rest are just markers, dots. But these two planets have a volume. You know, they are three-dimensional wireframe planets. One is a Jupiter-like planet. You see there in the middle. And the other one is a Saturn-like planet. You see it moving around. And um, another interesting point is the... Uh, there's an axis here. It's not on 20. Let's make it 10. Zoom out. You can see that uh, gray, uh, gray uh, grid. You know, like a square, like a cube kind of a divided cube. So it gives you a, a feel of how uh, how big the display is, the distance between the planets. Let's make it uh, 20. You see, it's very big now. You can choose it even 100 or 200 or 500. See, now it's, it's huge. I don't know how the useful this is, but it gives you an idea about the time, the scale of the system. The, um, there's a trail scale here. You can change it between, say, very small, 0 0.2. The, say 1, 0 0.4, 1, 2, 3, 10, or 20. Of course, this is not really useful unless you have very large trajectories. Uh, it's a mess. If you combine with a decimation of 20, you get yourself a, a huge, a huge speed and uh, a big mess. Be interesting to see but uh, I don't know if it's very useful for anything. Another thing that you can notice is it goes through the 5000 time steps 
and uh, then it wrap over uh, it wraps over so uh, it continues with step 0 after step 5000 let's go back to decimation of 1 trail, trail scale of maybe 3 and um, let's rotate it a little bit so that you get a better idea of the three dimensional structure of this okay and uh, might be some other minor features but I think I covered most of them if you want to download this model for free you can come over at uh, excelunusual.com my blog and uh, there's a lot of other uh, models and tutorials you can download thanks for watching